but Rock the Diploma is, is really, really helpful. It's a total of about 15 hours in that weekend. So it will, what? 15 hours of hell? Yes. Oh. You just get help, it's really helpful, but it's, it's the most painful thing. It's super helpful, but you just, you absolutely motor through concepts. And, yeah. So, um, I, I want to be, I want to be very clear. For the most part, I will be totally available any day during exam week to help you out with stuff. I, I, um, I'm not really doing much. There will be times where I will be asked to do, uh, I'll be asked to supervise in the gym or something like that. I'll be asked to, uh, we'll have a department meeting or we'll have a small group meeting with other teachers or something like that. So there will be times where I won't be available, but for the most part, I'll be available 24 seven during exam week. So I, I don't want you to feel like I'm pressuring you to do this, but I have heard that the students who take Rock the Diploma feel much more prepared than the students who don't. You can sort of just like dodge that. What? You can dodge that fee and just come over here. And well, yeah. In in. And, and please don't think that I'm not going to give you any review materials at all, Mark. Like, I will give you big, giant packages of, of like 60, 70 diploma questions for every single unit. And so you will have enough practice, and I will be available. But this is, this is for the people who really feel like they want to be the most prepared as they possibly can. Now, the problem with Rock the Diploma is that if, you, if you're taking four diploma courses this year, or this semester, sorry, if you're taking four diploma courses, well, this basically takes up an entire weekend, right? So that means that you, you're gonna have very little time to study that weekend for other things. So for example, if you're taking Physics 30 and Chem 30 this semester, then your, your Chem 30 exam is gonna be on the 28th or something like that. Your Physics 30 is gonna be on the 29th. They're going to be back to back, so I don't know how much time you're going to have for uh, the Physics 30 Diploma. But it's a decision that you have to make, okay? This information, just really quickly, Jordy, this information is on uh, Google Classroom. I put it on last night. So there's uh, the registration form. If you want to print off a registration form, or you can just go to the Career Center, and they have registration forms there. Obviously, you have to pay when you sign up. You have to pay when you register. But you can just you can grab a form from them. I'm going to try and print off some by the end of class, and I'll have some ready. Mark. Sorry. No, 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 no. Keep that question in mind, Jordy. You can go to the washer. Mark. Do you have like a booklet of diploma questions for like every unit? Yes. But but I but I give you. I give you practice diploma questions from most of the units so far to begin with. But yeah, the diploma questions that I'm going to give you is like a huge, massive stack of like 70 or 80 diploma questions. And I'll give, I'll give that to you closer to December. And then we'll talk about how to study for the diploma exam. I was going to say, would it be possible that you give some of those quiz space? Yeah, I'll give them to you a little bit closer to December, and then we'll, and, and, yeah, yeah, and we'll talk about what kind of a schedule that you should be doing in order to prepare for the diploma. Because some people, I don't know if some people have tried to cram for exams before, and, and for some people it works, and for some people it doesn't. I personally have always been a crammer, and it's been really, really successful for me, but that's always because I've learned the information in the class, and then I cram to review. I'm not cramming to learn things for the first time. Do you know what I mean? There's an important kind of differentiation there. So for some people, they need to start studying like a month ahead of time, and, and we'll talk about that kind of schedule um, when we get there. Is that okay? So I will, uh, I'll have some forms hopefully printed off by the end of class. I'm gonna give you, we're gonna start to something new right now. 14.3, this is the last booklet for chapter 14. Your, your next exam is on Tuesday, right? And it's going to cover 
everything obviously from chapter 14, but it's also going to cover some stuff from chapter 13 as well. It's a, like a, an entire redox review, or a redox, I guess, exam. Okay. We are going to do, uh, Macy, the, I just handed out a booklet. It's in the blue bin. We are going to talk about half cell stoichiometry right now. Does anybody remember what stoichiometry is? Yes, kind of. Does anybody want to give me a real brief description of what it is? Unbridged. <laughs> Does anybody want to give me a brief description? Number half. Okay, canceling units, right? Something to do with mass, max? Uh, you have you have an amount like you know a concentration or you'll, you'll know something about yeah. one substance and you're using it to figure out something else with the molar rate. Oh, good. So, the idea behind stoichiometry. Any form of stoichiometry is you're going to be given one substance or something about one substance, and it's going to ask you something about a different substance. That's the whole point of stoichiometry. It's like making a sandwich. And I say, okay, in order to make a sandwich, you need two slices of bread, and you need a little bit of meat or whatever, and you need some cheese. And we say, okay, if you had four slices of bread, how many sandwiches could you make? In essence, that's what stoichiometry is. That's all stoichiometry has to do with anything. Um, perfect. So the goal of stoichiometry has always been to relate chemical amounts of one substance to amounts of another substance. Let's do a really quick example. If 3.55 moles of sodium hydroxide are consumed, how many moles of iron 3 hydroxide will be produced? So what's happening here? Is so we've got sodium hydroxide and it's going to react with iron. There's going to be a double, or it's going to be a single replacement reaction. I'm not saying that this reaction will actually happen, but it's just as an example. So let's take iron and react it with sodium hydroxide. We're going to make iron 3 hydroxide. What's the formula for iron 3 hydroxide? F is over 2. What does the 3, the 3 belongs to one of these two things. Which one does it belong to, iron or hydroxide? Iron. iron. So iron 3. So if iron is 3 plus, hydroxide is 1 minus, we need 3 hydroxides, right? And we're going to make sodium. Again, I'm not saying this reaction will actually happen, but it's just, just by way of an example. So I don't know if you remember how I like to do stoichiometry. How I like to do stoichiometry might be totally different from how you like to do it. And that's fine. There's lots of ways to do it. But I like to put the information from these substances below who it belongs to. So the 3.55 moles, who does that belong to? Sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to put 3.55 moles under sodium hydroxide. What is it asking me for here? <coughs> the moles of iron 3 hydroxide. So I'm looking for N, and I'll say question mark. Now, something should jump out at you as being a huge problem. Natasha. Our equation isn't balanced yet. And if you don't balance the equation, what's the molar ratio always going to be? One to one. One to one. But that's really important. That's almost one of the most critical steps of doing stoichiometry is using the molar ratio. So how do you want to balance this? So we need three... NaOH, 
So we need 3Na, and then we're done, right? That's fine. So, when we're doing stoichiometry, do you remember? What do you start with? Unknown. That's what you, you could also start with what you want. I, the way I like to do it, start with what you want. Do we have to do the chant? No. no. You, it's, so, Jordy, if you don't do that, are there other ways of doing stoichiometry? Yes. The traditional way of doing stoichiometry is identifying, okay, let's take the number of moles that we're starting with. Let's use the molar ratio to convert it into the number of moles that we're ending with. And then if we have to do anything extra, we'll do that extra bit. But you're going to find in half cell stoichiometry, the start with what you want method is the easiest way to do it. Starting with Jordy, I think what you like to do is you like to get the moles of your given, yeah. use the molar ratio to get moles of what you want, and then do any extra steps after that, right? Yeah, but that's gonna be a little bit more complicated than my method, doesn't matter, it's whatever you want. Okay, so we are looking for the number of moles of FeOH3. And what I would say is, okay, do you have anything to do with moles of FeOH3? Is there anything to do with moles of FeOH3? Let's look at FeOH3. I don't have anything. Shucks. Start with the molar ratio. One mole of FeOH3 for every three moles of sodium hydroxide. And so I can recognize that I want moles of iron 3 hydroxide if I just cancel out moles of uh, sodium hydroxide. And so, Jordy, this is exactly backwards from the way you would do it, right? Yeah. And that's totally fine. Uh, sodium hydroxide. So our moles of sodium hydroxide and our moles of sodium hydroxide cancel. And we should get some sort of a number. I don't know what it is going to be. It's going to be 1.18 or something. Cool. 1.18 moles. <laughs> I definitely, I'm not smart enough to look it up before. I'm not organized. I'm not that organized. Okay. So our goal for this part of the unit is going to be uh, relating the amount of electrical current. Would you agree when you were trying to do the electrolysis of the copper and the electrolysis of the potassium iodide from yesterday, would you agree you had to force electricity through that solution? And so there's a way for us to measure how much electricity is passing through any given area, and it's using current. We first thing we have to do is we have to kind of learn a little bit about current, okay? Um, we have to identify the defining feature for redox reactions is the amount of electrons transferred during a reaction. So how many moles of electrons are transferred when one mole of zinc ions is reduced into zinc metal? One. What reaction is this talking about? Zinc ions turning into zinc metal. It's Zn plus, plus two. Zinc ions being reduced into zinc metal. You know, when you have to gain electrons. You'd have to gain electrons. How many moles of electrons? So two electrons are required for every one zinc ion. So this is critically important. We can use this. This is still a molar ratio. Pardon? Does that mean that the Browse number is just the weight of the electron? No. Uh, no. Um, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to relate the moles of electrons. We don't care about the mass of an electron. That doesn't matter to us. But what we care about is what is the quantity of electrons running through this wire every second? 
That's what's going to be really important for us to, to recognize here. So what's the molar ratio here between electrons and zinc ions? Two to, one. two to one. So two electrons for every one zinc ion. The problem is you can't measure moles of electrons. There's no way for you to measure, oh, we gained this many moles of electrons. That's not possible. So what we can do is we can measure, well, how many moles of electrons are passing through the wire every second? And if you know how many seconds, then you know how many electrons pass through the wire. Does that kind of make sense? No? So it's not really possible to measure a mole of electrons directly. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the current released during a reaction. Okay, so let's try this. The amount of charge released can be determined by measuring the electrical current. <clears throat> I want you to, if you have it on you, open up your data booklet to the, it's not the very first page, because the very first page is your periodic table, but open it up to page two, I think. Uh, chemistry notation, yeah. There we go. So when you look at here, does anybody remember back to grade nine? Oh, absolutely. No. When you talked about electrical current running through a circuit. Yeah. Like yeah? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Do you remember what units electrical current is measured in? Volts. No. Amps. Voltage is measured in volts. Resistance is measured in ohms. And current is measured in? Amps. Current is measured. I don't know. You tell me. What's current measured in? Kilojoules. No. What's current measured in? A or C. Amps or current. Amps. Or this weird thing that says C over S. No. Charge, yeah. It's coulombs per second. Okay, I know. Calm down. I know. You've probably never heard of a coulomb before. I get that. So electrical current is measured in amps. We call it, the proper name is amperes, but that we, everybody just says amps. An, an ampere is just an old white guy's name, that's all. So measured in amps, we say that it's A, but also one amp is also a coulomb per second. Electrical charge is a coulomb, it's measured in coulombs, again, an old white guy's name, <laughs> and we use the letter capital C to represent coulombs. So let's think about this. We can still use unit analysis using these weird, weird units. Basically, at some point in time, you can talk to Mr. Town more if you care about this, because I don't. Um, at some point in time, we had to define how much charge is going to be in one something, right? When we say one meter, you should kind of know how much that is, right? Well, who got to decide how much a meter was? The French. It was the French. It totally was the French, right? Because they invented the metric system. Uh, <laughs> okay, but who got who got to decide how long a second was? The British. Humans. Time. 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 the Greeks. Ah, oh, okay. Greeks. But so now, when we're dealing with electrical charge, we have to define. We have to say, oh, you have this much electrical charge. And so at some point in time, we had to define one coulomb to be a certain amount of electrical charge. And as far as your concern right now, we're just going to leave it at that. We're going to redefine a coulomb here in a second. 
but one coulomb is just a very defined amount of electrical charge. Yeah. Was it how much energy was in that old white guy? No, it wasn't how much energy the old white guy had. Okay, so let's try this. A battery is slowly releasing 0 0.15 amps of current. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like amps. Amps is a stupid unit. <laughs> So how else could we rewrite, instead of using amps as our unit, what could we write? I could say, oh, instead of being 0 0.15 amps, I could say 0 0.15 coulombs per second. I love that better. That's way better. I love that better. Yeah, but don't, don't English me, whatever. Okay. So, how much charge will be transferred in 30 seconds? Do you see anything in here, anything in here related to charge? Are there any units related to charge at all? What is charge always measured in? Coulombs. Do you see anything with coulombs in here? Yes. Start with what you want. We're looking for charge measured in coulombs. And I get that looks stupid. It looks funny. I know. So, do you have anything related to charge in here? Yes. 0 0.15 coulombs in one second. So, if we ran this for one second, how much charge would be given off? 0.15 coulombs, right? If we ran it for two seconds, how much charge would be given off? 0.30 coulombs. But we didn't run it for one second or two seconds. We ran it for 30 seconds. And what do you notice about the units? It's in seconds. Cross them up. So, Mark, how much charge will be transferred if this system runs for 30 seconds? 4.5 coulombs. 4.5 coulombs. Is that okay? Yes. What was, what was the key pivotal thing that we had to do in order to really solve this problem? Yeah, we had to rewrite amps as coulombs per second. Now, is that something that you have to memorize? Do you have to memorize that one amp is one coulomb per second? No. No because it's in your data booklet. Your data booklet has it right here. One amp is the same thing as a coulomb per second. <clears throat> now it'd be nice if you memorized it, but whatever, that's totally fine. What I want you to do, how much time will it take for a power plant that gives off 2.4 times 10 to the four amps to transfer one times 10 to the six coulombs of charge? <laughs> what was the key thing that we did? What was the key thing that we did in the last problem? Yo, V2, please. One pencil case has disappeared. Anybody else need a calculator? Yeah. It's been missing for weeks. Anybody else need a calculator? <laughs> Yeah, the E button is going to come back with the E is like times 10 to the power. E6 is doing that. I don't know, man. On other calculators, they don't even use E. They use a times 10 to the power. I wish I had that. Oh, I don't know this calculator. Okay. Instead of amps, what should I write? Coulombs per second. Now, what I want to ask you is, are we looking for charge? No. No, we're looking for time. So what's a, what's a different way I can write this? One second over. One second over 2.4 times 7 to 4 coulombs, right? So if we're looking for time measured in seconds, every one second... Every one second, how much charge is being transferred? 2.40 times 10 to the 4 coulombs. 
So if we want time, what's the only unit we have to cancel out? The coolant. So our coulombs and coulombs will cancel out. So if we have this much current running for, uh, or sorry, and, and we want to know how much time it will take to, to transfer this much charge, so you're going to get one, four, four times, I don't know, 42 seconds. 41.6666. Okay. 41.6666 seconds. So, but what do we have to round it to? 42. 41, right? No, you can't do 41.7. Okay. Why not? Because the zero doesn't matter. It's no, it's not that the zero doesn't matter over here. It's oh. that this number only has two digits, right? Or 4.2 times 10 to the 1 seconds. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, do you need any more practice on calculating this stuff? No, I, I, think, I think that's okay. We can jump right in. Let's jump straight into what? What? Yeah, these are all physics dudes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we are we are slowly kind of venturing into the realm of physics. I mean, one one could, Mr. Town might suggest that you know everything is physics, and I would shut the door on him because I don't want to do that. Really so let's try this. Michael Faraday was a British chemist and physicist. He worked, um, he, he was a very low educated individual. What that means is he was originally a bookbinder. And so being a bookbinder was a very, like, what you consider to be a blue-collar job. He did not have a lot of education. But because he was a bookbinder, he had a little bit of time to read those books. And so he was able to educate himself on a lot of the sciences at the time. And he was actually one of the most up-to-date people for knowledge at the time. Because who's the first person that's going to be able to read a brand new book? The bookbinder, the bookstore man, right? Yeah, that's exactly. So uh, what he did is he was, he was one of those individuals who was able to define... So what he said was, um, for every one mole of electrons... He said, this many coulombs of charge are being transferred. And that's, that's one of the ways we define a coulomb. It's, it's kind of a backwards way of defining a coulomb, but if you add one mole of electrons, this many coulombs of charge, of electrical charge, are being transferred. And again, you don't actually have to know this. This is a value that's in your data booklet. It's not on the definitions page. But it's on the next page. So Faraday's constant says that for every one mole of electrons, you will have 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs of charge built up. What's the F? It just stands for Faraday's. It's like uh, if I were to say D equals distance, right? We're just defining the letter F to represent this constant. Okay. So, how many moles of electrons? How many moles of electrons will be transferred if a cell is operating for 1.25 hours at a current of 0 0.150 amps? This is a really complicated question, but we can still use unit analysis to answer this. What do you want out of this? And is there a half reaction in here? Is it talking about a chemical reaction, a very specific chemical reaction? Yeah. It's, it's, I don't see anything here about talking about one specific chemical reaction. It's just saying we're transferring electrons. How much or, or how many moles of electrons will we transfer? 
So what do you know about one mole of electrons? There's, mm, no. There's a lot of those guys. Yeah. 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 We're looking for moles of electrons. We're looking for the chemical amount in moles of electrons. And we know for every one mole of electrons, how much charge is in one mole of electrons? So there are 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs in every single mole of electrons. Now, we don't know if we have 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs, but we should be able to figure that out. Is there anything else in here? We want moles of electrons. Let's cancel out coulombs. Is there anything else in here that has coulombs? The 0 0.15. Remember, amps is a stupid unit, right? Let's not use amps. Let's use what? Coulombs per second. So do you want coulombs on top or coulombs on the bottom? Coulombs on top. So 0 0.150 coulombs every one second. Now all we have to do is cancel out how many seconds. Do you know how many seconds are in 1.25 hours? Okay, how did you get that? Times 16 twice. <laughs> so this is, if we turn this into minutes, times by 60, and turn it into seconds, times by 60 again, right? So 4,500 seconds. So seconds and seconds, coulombs and coulombs, and we're left with moles of electrons. It's going to be a small number, right? Yeah. Did you, you are you using the EE button? Yeah. EE button so the nine. Type in one. Or what do you want to do? Do you want to do all the top divided by all of the bottom? Okay, so go go all the top, so you're gonna go zero point one five yeah. times forty five hundred divided by and then I always put brackets. Nine point six five. And then you go second. That's times 10 to the power of. Let's see, it's over. And then there's a second. Oh, there's one. Gotta write all that down. Okay, what'd you get? How many, first of all, how many significant figures do we want? Three. Three. So 6.99. 99? Yeah. Times 10 to the negative 3. What do you get? It is 6.99, right? 6.99 times 10. If you put 7.00, well, you must have rounded before you got the actual answer. Put this all in as one big calculation. Do you want me to watch this on my illegally downloaded calculator? Do you want to? No. What? <laughs> it's not, yeah. Come after me, whatever. Do you imagine like two <laughs> if any of your parents watch these videos, it's not illegally downloaded. It's not. It is. <laughs> okay. So let's try this. 0. 0.15 times 4,500 divided by, and you, because this is, there's only one number on the bottom, you don't need brackets, but I always put brackets just to get into a good habit. 9.65, what I do is times 10 to the power of 4, close bracket, 
So 6.99, what's that fourth digit there? Not enough. It's not a five or higher, right? So you cannot round to 7.00. Good. Okay, how much time in minutes is required for 2 4? Oh, Walton, come on. How much time is required for a current of 7.8 amps to transfer 0 0.165 moles of electrons? I, I, I just want you to try this out. What can you do? You can find it in seconds first, and then divide by 60. This is your second last reminder that your posters are due on Friday. Second, that's our second last, second last reminder. Second last reminder. Is the last one tomorrow? Yeah. Ooh, like I just handed like, my name. That's totally fine. Yeah. 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 So you're done with it? Yeah. I'm just going to put it in the bin. Okay. So it doesn't get lost. So it doesn't get lost in the... Uh, Fair enough. I just didn't know which one to put it in. My desk is kind of an abyss right now. Whatever touches it disappears It's not forever. as bad as Stone Lake's. I promise you that. Really? I promise you that. I'm going to have to go look at Stone Lake's. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to feel better about myself right now, so I'm going to go look at Stone Lake's. Right? Yeah, Stone Lake's is pretty bad. His desk is good, good, and then okay. Well, you have moles of electrons, so you can just cancel. I'm just gonna ask, how did the school not? Um, how did they not block me? Yeah, how did they not block me? Because I downloaded it on my computer and then took it over on a thumb drive. There you go. You really did it. You really did it to the school. I really did it. Yep. Yeah. You're going to walk into this room, see you really know it. Be like, oh no, Walton's doing something fish. Oh, no. I don't know. Okay, moles of electrons, moles of electrons, coulombs, coulombs. Denver, what's the moral of the story? I don't know. I'm the, trying. No, the moral of the story is don't forget your calculator. Because you know your calculator. No, I lost my calculator. Okay, do you... I need to get another one. Okay, in the meantime, is did you have a, a nice big one kind of like this? Yeah, I had to grab one. Yeah, okay, so I can let you borrow one of mine if you want, if it's that big of a deal. I don't know how this one also is. Your EX, your time to the power up button? It's like with this. No, it's right there. It's EXP. It's, it's just EXP. straight up EXP. Oh, I used that one. Yeah. Oh. Okay, what did you get? Sorry, how many seconds? 30, oh, oh. 2041. 2041. Three, four, six, one. Whatever, seconds, right? And then if we want to turn this into minutes, in every one minute, there's 60 seconds, right? Oh, that's the worst equal sign ever. So just divide that by 60. So what, well, how many minutes? 34.2. 34.2. Zero. So three digits, three digits, three digits, three digits, right? I know, it's just, it's an equal sign. Here, I'll make it even worse. And then that way, there's absolutely no, there we go. Perfect. Oh. Now it's obvious that it's an equal sign. Okay, is that are are we are we kind of okay with this idea of coulombs, seconds, Faraday's constant, time? There's I, there's a lot of units to keep track of here. So I have a lot of practice questions. The uh, answers are in the back of the textbook if you ever want to do these practice questions. I want to start actually doing some half-cell stoichiometry. Yeah. 
Nope, we weren't doing half cell stoichiometry. We were just doing some classic physics problems. That's it. Yeah. Why? Why? Because we had to, we had to like build up our repertoire of tools in our tool belt to be able to tackle these questions. But now these questions are going to be way easier than if I just sprung them on. Okay. Now that we have all the tools we need in our tool belt, we can start to predict amounts of chemical changes in a half cell. How many moles of copper will be deposited when 25.3 moles of electrons are used to reduce copper to to copper metal? First thing I want to ask you, is there a chemical reaction you could write down? Go ahead and write that down. The reduction of copper to to copper metal. Oh, why did I do I don't know, man. So in order for us to have a balanced chemical reaction, we need... Do you have to put it on that side? <laughs> what? Like, does it have, does the electrons have to be on that side of it? Uh, no, you could put it on this side of the copper 2 plus, right? As long as it's on the reactant side, as, as long as it's to the left of the arrow, then it doesn't matter where it is. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So what do you know about anything in here? Uh, there's 25.3 moles of the electrons. There's 25.3 moles, and that belongs to the electrons, right? And what do you want to find? What is something that you're looking for here? The moles of copper salts. You're looking for here the number of moles of copper salt, right? Oh, that's copper. Oh, copper two plus. Oops, gotta move that arrow. Boom. Okay. So, is this going to be a pretty easy question for you to answer? No. No. Yes. No. What do we want? More information. What do you want? Moles of copper solid. You want the moles of copper solid. Do you see anything related to moles of copper solid? Yes. Yes. You see the molar ratio. Couldn't you what? Yes. That's the intuitive way. So you're using your intuition. Have we ever talked about intuition in this class? No. Your, your intuition is like your gut feeling. That's you working out a question using logic and reasoning, right? And so absolutely. For every two of these, how many of these do you make? One. One. So if I take whatever this is and chop it in half, you're going to get that. But let's, let's just prove it to ourselves. So we're looking for the number of moles of copper. And for every one mole of copper, there's two moles of electrons. Shelby, why am I getting us to actually write this out? Um, so that we, um, in case, on the diploma, we forget our intuition that we can go back to this class. Yes. But also, not all questions are this easy, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to get way more complicated. <laughs> so moles of electrons and moles of electrons cancel, and we'll get moles of copper. So what that's going to be, 12.65? Yes, exactly. But that's not allowed. That's right. This answer is not allowed. 12.7, right? Good. Okay, was that fairly straightforward? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna just this is like one extra step up the ladder of difficulty, right? 
So how many moles of zinc will be electroplated onto a sheet of iron if 27.5 amps of current are applied for 10 minutes? I'm going to give you the chemical reaction. What do we, what's the chemical we're plating onto something? Zinc. The zinc. So we're reducing zinc. Just zinc ions. Zinc ions plus two electrons gives us zinc metal. <coughs> The, the iron we don't care about because the iron is being plated on, like, the iron is the thing being plated, right? So, the iron doesn't react with anything. What do you want out of this? You want how many moles of zinc, right? So we're looking for the moles of zinc. What information are you being given? The ratio. You're oh, being given right. the molar ratio, yeah. but what else are we being given? The, 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 the 27.5 coulombs per second. Who does that belong to in here? The electrons. Belongs to the electrons. 27.5 coulombs in one second. And if it's being applied for 10 minutes, let's just... Let's just, straight out of the gate, are you going to be able to use minutes in your calculation here? No. No, so how many is 10 minutes? <coughs> That's 600 seconds, right? And the 600 seconds technically the bel belongs to the electrons, but it belongs to everything. So, what are you looking for? The moles of zinc, so the number of moles of zinc. Look under the zinc, is there anything there? No. No, so probably we're gonna have to start with the ratio, molar ratio. Jordy, in, in your version, we could do it exactly opposite way, right? We could find the moles of electrons and then convert it, and so if you want to continue to do that, that's that, fine. It's like the mole per liter. It's like if the question says this is the sum of the many moles per liter, and it's like this many liters, it's the same thing. Yeah. Like coulombs per second. Yes, coulombs per second or moles per liter. Like yeah. they, they represent, like in this much, there is this much of this, yeah. right? Okay, so one mole of zinc for every two moles of electrons. I'm curious, do you see, out, outside of the coefficient, outside of the molar ratio, do you see anything to do with moles of electrons? So, so we can use Faraday's constant. Because we do know that one mole of electrons contains 9.65 times 10 to the fourth. So we will look at our data booklet, and one mole of electrons contains 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs of charge. Have we successfully canceled out moles of electrons? Yes. Yes. Now what's the only thing we have to cancel out right now? Son of a gun, how do you cancel out coulombs? So coulombs will cancel, and then 600 seconds, right? So seconds cancel, coulombs cancel, moles of electrons cancel, and we should be left with moles of zinc. Again, it's going to be a tiny number. <laughs> I don't have a whole heck of a lot of room, but what did we get for an answer? 8.55 times 10 to the negative 2. 8.55 times 10 to the negative 2? Yes. If you're not doing this calculation along with us, did you get a big number?
8.55 times 10 to the negative 2 moles. Awesome. Can I, can I ask you to do the next one? Okay. Kiloamps, or kiliamps, or whatever, is just 1,000 amps. So if you ever, if you ever don't like seeing some sort of a metric prefix like this, kilo, mega, giga, something like that. Just take this number and replace it with scientific notation. Replace it with, what does kilo stand for? 10 to the 3. Times 10 to the 3. Just, just straight up erase the K or cross it out and say times 10 to the 3 coulombs per second. Is that okay? Yes. So if you ever see something like that, then that's, that's, that's always an option for you. And you don't have to memorize them because they're given in your data book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're plating aluminium. So what's the reaction to turn aluminium ions into aluminium solid? Al3 plus. Al3 plus plus three electrons, right? What amount of aluminum will be plated from aluminum nitrate? So we need to start with aluminum ions to get aluminum solid. We don't care about nitrate. The nitrate doesn't do anything. It's a spectator in this reaction. Remember, we're, we're trying to think about half reactions here. The half reaction of aluminum ions turning into aluminum salts. Is there ever going to be full reaction cells? I, I could ask you to do I could ask you to do stoichiometry on a full reaction. With the electrodes. Um, but but electrons, if it's a full reaction, then the electrons should cancel, right? Yeah. And so I, I typically won't ask you to do that. I'll I'll talk to you about but if we're ever if we're ever plating a metal, just look at that metal half reaction, the one that's making the solid. And that will be the reaction that you use. So, what I did Yeah, that's it's how much we like the electricity. Yep. No, no. It might take me a couple seconds to figure out how you're starting it out, but it's it's uh, it would make sense. You're just getting you're getting moles of this and turning it into moles of that. That's all you're doing. Is it 18,000 seconds? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the way I would solve it. I would start, I look, okay, I, I want moles of uh, aluminum. There's nothing there. There's no information, so I'll start with the molar ratio. I want to cancel out moles of electrons. So then I have to cancel out coulombs. And then I have to cancel out seconds. Hello. 
And when you put this into your calculator, what do you get? Nine hundred and thirty-three. Nine hundred and thirty-three moles. That's not right. Okay. So, so nine hundred and thirty-three and three hundred and ten. One of those numbers is three times larger than the other. Yeah, that makes sense. That would make sense. There we go. So three hundred and ten. It's 310.88. 310 so 311, right? So 311 moles of aluminum. Uh, or 3.11 times 10 to the 2 moles of aluminum. Yay. Okay. Any questions so far? No. No? You give up. I'm tired. Don't give up. Can I move on from this? Sure. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Okay. This is like, this is the top tier, kind of the, the hardest question, hardest two questions I could really possibly ask you about this half cell stoichiometry. Now, let's, let's summarize it. Don't even really think about how you would solve the question yet. Let's just set it up to be solved, and then let's diagnose how we can solve this. What mass of copper would you predict to be plated? So what reaction are we going to use? The one with copper, where you're turning copper ions into copper metal. How can we turn copper ions into copper metal? Having a weapon. So like they could be tricky and they could throw in like something that has a three negative charge like phosphate, for example, so this is copper phosphate, and they they would expect to know that it'd be copper three plus. No. Oh. Um I what I would suggest is that the diploma exam will will I've never seen it stray away from these half reactions on here. Okay. And if they do, they give you the half reaction. Okay, so they'll either give you, just straight up give you the half reaction, or, right, Max, they'll say copper, you're plating copper, and you just assume that you're taking copper to and turning into copper. Just assume that that's the reaction. What? All right. Okay, so let's take this information. Uh, what mass, so I'm, we're looking for mass, question mark. When you plate uh, using 95 amps, do we like amps? No, no. no. boo, okay. So 95.0 coulombs in one second are applied for 30 minutes. Son of a gun. 1,800 seconds. Okay, let's think about this for a second. We will, and this is where this is where Jordy's method actually comes in really handy. What we're going to do is we're going to we're basically remember taking a chemical amount of one thing and relating it to a chemical amount of another thing. That's what stoichiometry means. So, we're eventually going to get moles of copper. How can we get moles of copper and then turn that into mass of copper? You're going to have to need the molar mass of copper. What is the molar mass of copper? No, that's fine, but it's good for you to look it up, right? Because you know exactly where to get it. Our answer is going to be in grams. Your answer should be in grams, right? Yes. Is the diploma expecting us? If it doesn't explicitly say grams, just put grams. Um, it might, it might ask you how many kilograms, but typically what they'll do is they'll they'll have kilo somewhere else in the question, and you just you your goal is to not turn kilo into something else. Right? Just keep the kilo, and the kilo will carry on, and you'll get kilograms. I I haven't seen kilograms on the diploma exam before, but never know. Okay, so we're looking for the mass in grams oh, of copper oh, 
This is going to be a long one, yeah. But can you, can you appreciate how all we're doing right now is taking our puzzle pieces and arranging them and canceling out values? Yeah. So we take our grams per mole, 63.55 grams of copper in every one mole of copper. And we take our moles of copper and turn it into moles of electrons. So one mole of copper is two moles of electrons. Do you see anything else related to moles of electrons in here? No. So what are we supposed to use though? <laughs> Faraday's constant. So one mole of electrons is 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs. And then now we have coulombs per second. In one second. And finally, we ran it for 1,800 seconds. Seconds and seconds, coulombs and coulombs, moles of electrons, moles of electrons, moles of copper, moles of copper. Have we successfully gotten rid of every single unit other than the grams of copper? Yes. I'm expecting a like a moderately big number. <laughs> How many significant digits should we have? We need two, right? Why two? Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. If I said thirty point zero minutes, that would mean something different, right? So what was it? Fifty three grams? Fifty six. Fifty six equals fifty six grams. <laughs> Yep. Woo! Holy guacamole. This is, this last question is like a little, it's a little tiny bit more difficult than the previous question, but it's really not that bad. Read the next question and tell me what, like just identify what are you looking for? What are the units you're looking for? Current. And what is current measured in? No, it's, it's measured in coulombs per second. So you're looking for one unit on top and one unit on on the bottom. Just like concentration, where you have moles on top and liters on the bottom. So what chemical reaction is this? What are you plating onto something? Zinc. So you're plating zinc. That means you need to take zinc 2 plus. Two electrons. And if you want to plate 13 grams, again, stoichiometry is all about relating moles to moles. So, how can we get moles of zinc? Molar mass. Using the molar mass of zinc, right? 65.4. And it says one hour, so really that's 3,600 seconds. And then we're looking for current. What? 65.41, sorry. Okay, how are you going to start with Coulombs? The uh, second, the Faraday. Yeah, the I don't I don't see anything that has coulombs on the on the top yes, here. So, but we we could start with coulomb or us uh, with Faraday's constant because that has coulombs in it, yeah. and then we could just cancel out moles of electrons, right? So we're looking for a current which is measured in coulombs per second, and 
And when I look at this thing, there's nothing related to Coulomb's at all. So we were forced to use Faraday's constant. And then from here, we can just continue on canceling things. Two moles of electrons for every one mole of zinc. We need to cancel out moles of zinc. I have moles of zinc. One mole of zinc for every 65.41 grams of zinc. We know we are given 13 grams of zinc. So grams and grams, moles of zinc, moles of zinc, moles of electrons, moles of electrons. Now you want you want coulombs per what? Second. Second. So seconds of, at the end, or, or anywhere, it doesn't matter where you put it, but at the end you want to put it on the bottom. 3,600 seconds. If you're struggling with this idea, we're going to practice this a bunch more tomorrow. Okay, I know today was just kind of listening to me rabble on, but I wanted us to get kind of used to this. If you didn't know you were definitely allergic to peanuts, yes. have you? Well, I, I suppose I should always ask if I was never actually going to give you my lunch because I want it. Okay, <laughs> so but I could have given you half. Maybe I should ask from now on: Have you ever eaten? peanuts before in your life. Yes. Have you? Yes. Oh, okay. Are you allergic? No. Okay, what did we get? Um, yeah, there's four minutes left in class. Yes. 10.7? Coulombs per second or 10.7 amps. Right? It's whatever. They're the same thing. Okay, you are, other than some of the, we're going to do some like special topics stuff after I give you a little bit of uh, work to do tomorrow. But I, I mean, other than maybe one special topic, you're done all the stuff you need in order to be successful for the exam on Tuesday. So you can do all those diploma questions, you can answer all the assignments in your major assignments.